This is a tune that I co-wrote with my son, Alex. Uh, we wrote it separately. Uh, my mom passed away very suddenly in 2007. And a few months after that, I really wanted to write her a tune in honor. And uh, I could only come up with one part for some reason. So I asked my son, Alex, who was 16 at the time, if he could come up with a second part. And he said that he already had one part and couldn't come up with a mate for that. So what I did was uh, we sat down and he played his part, I played my part, and they just flowed in together, just as if we had sat there and co-wrote it together. So uh, this is called Memories of Eva. One, two, three, one, two. <laughs> I was teaching at the Emma Lake Fiddle Camp uh, one year, I think it was around 1994, and I had met this great fiddle player from Nova Scotia by the name of Gordon Stoby. And Gordon and I had a day off together, and what you do on your days off there is laundry. So here we are in the laundry room, we were sharing the washers and the dryers, and we had our fiddles, and we thought maybe we should write a tune together. So we sat there for a couple hours and banged this tune out, and it was a great little swing tune. And because it was July 1st, Canada Day, we decided to call it the Canada Day Swing.
up in a small town called Lorette, Manitoba, just east of Winnipeg. It's about 10 minutes or so from the Mint. Um, my parents moved there in 1971. I'm not sure why they chose that town. We had no connection, no family there. And I was one of about seven or eight kids that went to uh, the schools there right from kindergarten through grade 12. Uh, a lot of people moved away. A lot of people would come there for a while. But, you know, there was a few of us that, that graduated in 1988 that uh, started kindergarten together. So that was kind of cool. Um, I spent a lot of time in the community center or the arena, we'd call it. I played some baseball there in the summer, curling in the winter, some figure skating. Um, used to work in the canteen with my mom. That was really exciting. I loved that. <laughs> and I think I probably had my first gig there. I uh, played for the Lorette Winter Carnival. Uh, the parish hall in town here. Uh, also, I s played a few dances there over the years and uh, played more bingo there, I think, with my mom. We'd go on Wednesday nights and that, again, that was another big treat for us. Um, I grew up just outside of town, about three miles. Uh, it was about three miles between the town of Lorette and the Trans-Canada Highway, Deacon's Corner, if you're familiar with that. And uh, we lived on the big curve. So I uh, had a big yard. I'd climb trees. I'd go for bike rides either, you know, to the right of the driveway or to the left of the driveway. So I'm really grateful that I had the chance to grow up in a great town like Lorette. This is a tune that I wrote back in, I guess, the early 2000s. Um, it was a tune that was going through my head. I'll be doing stuff and I'll randomly have tunes going through my head and then it'll take me a while to realize that sometimes they aren't tunes that are already written. I don't know them. So I'll get my, get my recorder out and, and record them real quick. And this is one that I had uh, for probably a few weeks going through my head. So I uh, decided to call it, it's a really strange, strange title. It refers to a road trip that I was on. I had a cooler, I had some fruit in there, and I was telling my friend, I said, I got some plums in my cooler. And it's amazing how much energy just eating a plum gives you while you're driving. You don't have to stop and get a chocolate bar or something, or, you know, one of those caffeine shots. Plums in the cooler, they really uh, help you with your energy level. So uh, just kind of stuck, plums in the Two, cooler. One. <laughs> I used to play for a lot of old time dances and somebody gave me some advice a while back saying uh, you pick the best couple on the dance floor and play to them all night. So there was a couple from Rosser, Manitoba, Bill and Pat Blair, and they were the best ones on the floor every single time. They became really good friends with my mom and I, and I wrote them a tune called Pat and Bill's Jig. And the second tune uh, I wrote for a friend of mine by the name of Cindy Campbell. Cindy uh, is a great lover of fiddle music and dancing. She's a Métis lady. And uh, she would always request me to play this tune that she liked called Romeo's First Change by Andy DeJarlis. So I figured Cindy was special enough that I would write her her very own tune. And I called this uh, second tune that is in this set, Cindy One, Campbell's two, First Change. One. 